Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for coming. My name is Chris Kennedy, and I'm the curator for the Wavelength series here at TIFF Bell Lightbox. And on behalf of TIFF Bell Lightbox, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the uh, traditional territories of the uh, Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit Nation, and we thank them for their hospitality for having us here. Um, thank you for coming to Wavelengths tonight. Uh, this is uh, the third in our fall, uh, sorry, fall. It feels like fall, doesn't it, today? Uh, f f the third in our winter series. Uh, uh, our next screening is on April 23rd. We're showing uh, um, Francisco Berry's Org, which is this amazing uh, lost but now found um, uh, three-hour epic by uh, the Argentinian-Italian filmmaker uh, Fernando Berry. And I really encourage you guys to come out if you like, uh, if you find the... Um, uh, the cuts and uh, frenetic energy of tonight uh, any appealing. Uh, that film has 19,000 of them over the course of three hours. So I do encourage you to come join us 6.30 on the 23rd. Uh, but tonight, we're very happy to have uh, Rain Vermette into town. She's here from Winnipeg. Um, she's been making um, kind of an incredible uh, body of work also uh, cut up and uh, reanimated um, in really interesting ways. Um, and uh, tonight we're going to look at uh, the films that range across about eight years of her, her practice. And so without further ado, please welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm super happy to be here under the final supermoon of 2019. Uh, I wrote down what I was going to say because normally I forget. So, uh, yeah, so this actually represents uh, kind of like a first chapter of my artist practice. It's been the last eight years or so, um, a very self-indulgent and um, self-motivated time where I was actually just kind of trying to uh, define this chasm of, of filmmaking, which is actually quite something I literally fell into. Um, at the time I was studying um, architecture and just kind of really following this like vague architectural impulse. I had like a really strong aversion to um, built proposals, learning AutoCAD, making models. And so I had like developed this ruse of working and uh, that was just making my own very simple scenes out of paper, paper cutouts embossed and um, photographing my way through them obsessively over and over and over again. Um, at the time, I didn't know I was animating. I didn't know that there was some, such a thing as experimental film. Um, yeah, and so eventually I fled from those architectural studies. I had about five months left in my master's and I was just like, I wanna make movies. Um, so I actually just left in order to pursue what I had intended to be my master's uh, final project, but um, away from academia. Um, and that film is the uh, Tudor Village, a one-shot deal, which I think is the first one, or one of the first, the second one. Uh, so I pursued that film uh, privately and uh, guided under a dark room of uh, a self-taught fashion and also under the umbrella of uh, workshops at the Winnipeg Film Group. Um, and it was there at the Winnipeg, Winnipeg Film Group that I started making like films. Um, and like thinking back on these works, I think I was making films as a bo both a means to embrace and also reject the world from which I was making these films. Um, so this unconscious development of uh, an animator's eye is what actually really guides the spirit of my work. Um, I'm always simply just thinking about setting a stage to reanimate innumerable em ephemera of all of cinema's devices. Um, obsession is totally wrought in every direction, in every facet of my work, and uh, it's my own hand which carefully guides um, everything from the direction, cinematography, making of props, uh, sets, animation material, edit and sound device. Um, I've never really been so much interested in like how to make a film. I've just been more or so interested in how a film occurs. Uh, yeah. So on display are a various means of reanimation, uh, whether it's the reinterpretation of a Russian avant-garde painting, 
reenactments of films and personal events, revisiting familiar places, uh, rewriting pre-existing texts, reshifting the male gaze, repurposing sound through the sample, um, restaging a Turinese apartment tour, retelling an architect's faith, and um, most, most obviously this compulsive, compulsive act of um, reconstructing through a celluloid 16 millimeter film collage. Uh, this program ends with my film Domus, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, I think like sometimes I think of like the eight years just were merely a seed to like lead to this climactic end because uh, Domus sitting within the frame of everything that matters to me as a person, human being, artist uh, is like the most perfect film. I just love this film so much. Um, it's really a, the most sublime close to an uh, intimate volume of films. Um, and it also attempts to rewrite the future. And so with finishing Domus, I like shifted gears 100%. I'm now working on a feature length narrative. Um, so yeah, so it's like in true celebration that I'm like here with you guys and uh, watching these films. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll start with a couple just to get the juices flowing, I guess. Um, can you tell me how you were introduced to Carlo Molino? I mean, he plays a role in two of your films and maybe more. Yeah, uh, he plays a role in everything, yeah. everything I do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, uh, you know, I was in architecture school. I was like, I didn't like anything. I was struggling to find something that spoke to me. Like we spent 10 days in Paris and I like came back home. I was like, oh, um, and I was really kind of coming up, up against a lot of things that are kind of like just architectural conventions. And a lot, a big thing that I was honing in on was like the drawing is a static thing and how we're using these drawings to make these things, which we live in and like the difference between the drawing and the thing we make and kind of really resisting a lot of things. And, uh, so a prof at my time at the time was just like, you know, I'm surprised you haven't heard from about Carlo Molino yet. He's a bastard, much like yourself. And uh, he kind of introduced me to the um, erotic uh, Polaroids that Molino had made. And those kind of like really spoke to me. And I just, yeah, like he's just somebody who I keep digging into. And I went, I don't really like traveling, but I went to Turin to visit his apartment. Um, there was just, yeah, something that was just like immediately there. He's a very like controversial figure too so I think in Domus 2 I'm kind of just rewriting it kind of more under the guise of myself to kind of just put a traje trajectory and kind of cast aside some of those kind of you know darker areas of who he was and stuff like that but um yeah I met him at architecture school I don't know blank stare <laughs> fair enough um uh I mean, you also you touched on something that also I found interesting. You kind of your frustration with um, trying to create an ob drawing an object and trying to create an object. I think um, you know I think of architecture, and I'm not an architect, right? Um, as a, a movement from two dimensional to three dimensional space, and and I feel like you know in many ways your films are very much playing with dimensions and space. And did you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, uh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm interested in a lot of space and I'm also heavily interested in those spaces that aren't necessarily easily accessible or visible and all the dimensions of life. And that was kind of what I was really into in the School of Architecture was like that metaphysical space, like being paranoid in a place like I did all this work about being really paranoid in my apartment and being worried about somebody uh, kind of breaking in and actually those drawings in Domus where like the hand kind of splats out those drawings those are my perspective drawings and those were drawings that I was making uh, trying to like track kind of stream of consciousness within a space while drawing a space in accordance to time on it you know what I mean so I was kind of just like really just working hard to kind of deconstruct material things in order to find kind of these corporeal kind of built bodies or um, which you know was like really exciting, invigorating work. But then at the end of it was like, March, you gotta, you gotta like shit out a building rain. And it was like, I never could, you know, cause I was just like out in God knows where, you know? Um, 
And so definitely this like really feeds into kind of the work I do in film, just kind of using uh, like filmmaking and cinema as an analogy for like seeing and how we can kind of change the way we're seeing to kind of, you know, uh, kind of see spaces differently and maybe kind of, you know, experience them differently or kind of conceive of something else. Yeah. Yeah, and the last two f films, I really feel like, I mean, obviously the last film, Nomus, is we spent a lot of time in your studio. Yeah. And then um, in the previous film, we spend a lot of time in your your home, I feel. And I think that yeah. kind of mapping out of the d interior spaces is really quite fascinating work. Yeah, and that was something, like, I've always been really keen on uh, photographing my desk space. And that was something I started doing in the School of Architecture. So it's been, like, you know, 12, 13 years of me just always really keeping a record of like the place where creation comes from or where is that that place and um my own space kind of just as a as a means to kind of understand my relationship to it or something it's just something i i always just naturally do um it's kind of boring but i don't know I like boring things do we have any questions uh, there's a hand in the back um, I guess just kind of running on the idea of space and spatiality, uh, I wonder whether you can talk a little bit more about your use of sound, not just the songs, but also the soundscapes. They're very, um, like, they're very dynamic and emotional, and I'm wondering whether you want to talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, totally. I I love doing sound design in my films. It's like I, I'm one of those people who's like, sound is 70% of a film, because uh, I really think that sound can really kind of push you and place you into places. Um, so yeah, like soundscape, it depends on the film. I deal with it differently, but I always kind of like use sound to kind of like point to those things that you can't necessarily see, but that I kind of want in that frame. Um, and uh, again, like really working through sound like as a collage means. So there's always like so much stuff filtering into that soundscape. Um, like, uh, you know, in Domus, like looking at my own studio, just really thinking about, you know, Casa Molino, which was next to a zoo. So then I'm like grabbing zoo sounds to put into that. And it's it's just like another means for me to like ornate the scene, you know, and it's like the most um, like delicious way. And then and then I kind of get into effects and like, oh, what does that mean? You know what I mean? If I put an echo on it, like that totally changes everything. And it's. And even doing the narration myself kind of it like exploded this world for me where I kind of was recording myself incessantly every day doing this narration and kind of realizing how like if I say something a certain way, it me like the implication is totally different. So it's really just like a means of playing and just trying to get a little bit more precise with that kind of intangible matter that I'm trying to like somehow reveal. Yeah. Other questions anyone is listening? So there's one right there. Uh, thank you so much for your films. Uh, I really, really enjoyed them. I was wondering if you uh, could talk a little bit more about narrative and um, how your approach to narrative uh, changed over the course of your filmmaking and, and whether uh, with any of these, these films, uh, narrative was not even on the table and and that wasn't something you were thinking about or whether what sort of presence that has yeah. in your filmmaking yeah uh yeah i think it's uh actually i think the main component in all of my films that i'm experimenting with is how to tell a story like uh prior to studying architecture i was studying english literature so i've always been kind of a writer but like how to tell the story in a way that i'm not having to tell you the story and kind of experimenting with that and again like trying to touch into kind of more sentimental kind of evocative kind of feelings kind of uh ways um and just really playing with like how much can i say to kind of get my point across um i also really like to work through metaphor all the time so how can i like place kind of a metaphor either an image or a sound or something i'm saying to kind of you know speak to something else um but yeah like the approach to narrative too is i kind of just like have these ideas of images in my head which kind of speak a little bit to what I'm trying to get to. So I just kind of go and I film those or I find those images. 
and then in the edit is where it kind of like that story kind of starts to unfurl. Um, and then like Domus was kind of an interesting case for me because I was more directly kind of working with a the narrative there because uh, it was kind of like, I'm going to make a documentary about Carlo Molino. Uh, and so like the first draft was, and also I was like writing, I was shooting, I was editing, I was animating. Like everything I do is like this very like, it's like a symphony that's like just like a huge cacophony of everything happening at the same time. But uh, like the first draft w was very much like, Carlo Molino was born in Turin, you know, and like he really liked, you know, trick flying and stuff like that. And then I really kind of started thinking about poetry as a means to really deconstruct that kind of overarching kind of uh, voiceover. And um, yeah, and then I'm always like borrowing from other things. Like most of the narrative stuff has just been stolen, like True Stories, Paris, Texas. Uh, in Domus, I kind of word for word recreated the tour I got in Casa Molino in my own thing. So I'm, al I'm always just stealing things too and just kind of using that as a means to build upon, a, yeah, build upon whatever I'm trying to say or, yeah. It's easier to steal things, yeah. Um, obviously, you, you, you talked a lot about the collage method that kind of led to your work and I see you do uh, flat collages and mm -hmm. paper. Um, um, what how did you introduce yourself to actually slicing up film like that's 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 a level of that's a, that's a change like it's a level of, yeah. It, yeah well it was kind of yeah like being introduced to like film making with like 16 mil and a bolex it was like oh my god like this is a physical thing and when i was in the school of architecture i was always really struggling with materiality and here i actually was like understanding materiality and here i was able to like have a very one-on-one -on -one physical relationship with time. Like this is a second, you know, and like I can do so much things within the second. Um, but like it just happened via fluke. Cause I was always like, I was really drawn to like just looking at things and whatever, and was kind of really playing with film and manipulating it. And I was just like bending it a lot and it kind of tore. Um, and it kind of really looked like a lot of the collages I was doing in the school of architecture. So immediately like my brain went to just layering. Uh, and so tricks, are for kiddos like the first film that was just a prototype to see like how much I could push that JK obstacle printer digital thing at the Winnipeg film group it was like I think th that might have something here I was gonna see if I could do it uh and then yeah once it was like I could do it it was just like oh like the, my world just like totally exploded yeah it's just uh yeah I don't know I have like it's easier to understand things for me to kind of just work with my hands and cut things up and move things around and like let that kind of gu guide the process yeah i mean it's, speaking of tricks of, for kiddos your description of it is is this guy madden quote which yeah. which actually baffles a lot of people yeah right? that you, he said it that you cannot collage a film is yeah he is, totally uh, said that yeah we were up, we were up for dinner and then uh yeah, he just was just like, you know, I love collage because it's totally impossible to collage, collage a film. Mm -hmm. And this happened like when I just started kind of thinking about making films. Like I had just left architecture school. I had just like gone to the Winnipeg Film Group and he was kind of pissing me off at that dinner. And I was like, you know what? You totally fucking can collage a film and like I'll show you how. And so it started with like actually physically man manipulating it. But then that kind of totally instructed like everything, like everything, how I approach my edits, how I approach, how I write a story. It's all just, just assembling. Yeah. Other people, other questions? It's in there. Hi, um, I was wondering if your process of like assembling films is very like linear. Do you end up going back forth between like the cuts you make or is the process does it dictate this kind of like continually adding on again uh, over top and over top yeah like it depends on the project i i'm not a very like i don't really work very in a very linear fashion but uh often it's kind of like i just especially with like the film collage stuff it's like i'll collage i'll get a digital copy and then like i just trash it like i'm not very precious about what i make and it's kind of like as soon as i have like a copy of it i move in further um but there is kind of a linear build up like uh like i think you guys can recognize like there's you know scenes that are reappearing there's like footage that's reappearing like everything is kind of really building upon itself and i really like this idea of you know 
looking at my body of work and being able to like trace like a very conceptual genealogy through everything. Um, so in that fashion, yes. But yeah, things are just, uh, it's like a very instinctual process, which changes, yeah. Other questions from the end? All right, well. We're good. Mm, sounds <laughs> great. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone.